From a studio high above the clouds of the Okanagan Valley, this is the Cannabis Podcast. Exploring the world of Canadian cannabis culture, one toke at a time. Now, here's your host and bud tender, Gary Johnston. And because I feel it is my duty as the host to take care of that one toke at a time part, I, I have done so. Welcome back. Thank you so much for coming back. This is episode 87 of the Cannabis Podcast. If this is your first time here, well, thank you for joining. I hope you're going to enjoy it. Next 30, 40 minutes or so, we're going to spend a bit of time talking about cannabis. Now, if this is your first time here, let me remind you that this show is intended for entertainment purposes for those 19 or older in your jurisdiction. And you should always consume cannabis responsibly. What are we talking about today? Well, we're going to revisit the topic of storage because of some gifts I got for my birthday. Thanks to our friends at the Okanagan Z, a story about uh, Christmas morning and one in three going to wake and bake. We're going to touch on a story from 420 Intel that gives some tips for safely sharing your weed during the flu season. I suppose it could apply to other parts of the pandemic as well. A story from City News in Halifax about how more Canadians getting their pot from legal channels than ever before, and the source for that is actually Health Canada. On Cultivar Corner, we are going to do one of my birthday gifts from my son Ian. Cake and caviar waffle bites is coming up for a taste. And my other son, Sean, who doesn't come up for much discussion because he's not that interested in cannabis, had a really good experience with edibles lately. And we're going to touch on that. Plus, as I said, some talk about storage, including the sea vault. All of that and more on episode 87 of the Cannabis Podcast. And before we get started today, let me give some shout outs to some recent supporters who bought me a doobie or two. Jeff, thank you so much for your support. A double doobie. And Rob and Camrose, dude, I don't believe it. Another five doobies from you. Thank you so much, Rob. And Doug and Courtney BC, he added two doobies to our session. So thank you all. I really appreciate your support. Should you enjoy what you're hearing and feel so inclined, you can check it out at buymeacoffee.com slash cannabis podcast. And now let's talk about what a fabulous year 2021 was for cannabis. At least it was good for something. An annual Health Canada survey suggests that Canadians purchased more cannabis from legal sources in 2021 than ever before, with sales from brick-and-mortar retail stores tipping into the majority for the first time since legalization. Now, this is a story from City News Halifax. The survey of more than 10,000 Canadian pot users over the age of 16, released on Wednesday, revealed that 53% of respondents purchased cannabis regularly from a legal storefront, up from 41% last year. About 11% made their pot purchases through a legal online source, down from 13% in 2020. Illegal storefronts, illicit online shops and dealers were each the main source for 2% of respondents, down from 3% from last year. Roughly 11% say they got cannabis from friends, 3% received it from a family member, and about 8% grew their own pot. The new data comes after regulators and cannabis companies have spent the years since recreational pot was legalized in 2018, lowering prices and opening more stores to try to squeeze the illicit market. They posited that more access to cannabis stores and more attractive pricing would help legal channels compete with dealers and other illicit sources that offered low prices, delivery, and convenience. While the Health Canada data suggests the legal market is chipping away at the illicit market, cannabis industry observers have long noted that the stigma associated with pot use and fear of repercussion discourages those using illegal channels from answering the survey. See, there's that damn stigma again. Health Canada itself warned that the results may be impacted by participation bias. Because respondents were informed the survey was about cannabis, making those who consume the substance more likely to offer data. I can see that. (laughs) Health Canada's survey also offered a window into how the COVID-19 pandemic is impacting pot use. When people who use cannabis over the last year were asked if their pot use had changed due to the pandemic, 49% reported using the same amount of cannabis a decrease from 56% in 2020. Nearly 30% reported using more, up from 22% in 2020, and 22% reported using less, a number that did not change. The swings seen in the amount of cannabis used because of the pandemic were most dramatic in younger age groups. About 25% of people 25 years and older reported using more cannabis, compared to 46% of those between the ages of 16 and 19, 
and 40% between the ages of 20 and 24. The number of Canadians who use cannabis nearly almost every day or daily was nearly unchanged at 26%. Welcome to the club. Meanwhile, the respondents who reported using cannabis in the past year decreased from 27% in 2020 to 25% in 2021. Of those who stuck with the pastime, most used smoking as a consumption method, but vaporizing, drinking, and applying cannabis to skin rose in popularity. And that was a report by the Canadian Press, first published December 23, 2021. So that is up-to-date data that more Canadians are in fact getting their pot from legal channels than ever before. And that's a pretty good Christmas present for all of us. From the cannabis-infused studio in the clouds, this is the Cannabis Podcast. Since the topic of Christmas has already been raised, we're now going to go to a story from the OkanaganZ.com. This is written by my friend David Wiley. And before we dive into the story, have you picked up your copy of issue number five of the ounce.ca yet? It is the print version of the Okanagan Z. Great magazine, really high quality. If you have not checked it out yet and you live anywhere in BC and Alberta, I think you should be able to pick it up at most cannabis stores these days. Go check it out. Uh, great articles in there. Always are. And I'm kind of happy there's an ad for the Cannabis Podcast in this issue, too. Hope to gain more exposure over that. So make sure you pick up the ounce wherever you buy your cannabis. Now, this is a story written by my friend David Wiley. Nearly one in three people are going to wake and bake on Christmas Day. That's according to a recent survey by CBD Oracle that found 28% of respondents were planning to get high first thing in the morning on Christmas. Oh, I love being a member of this club. Smoking weed at Christmas isn't the sort of thing you'd see in a Hallmark special, but the survey suggests 28.4% of people who've tried weed intended to do it just after waking this year, says CBD Oracle. They asked in a survey of 2,000 people what part of the day, if any, is ideal for indulging on Christmas Day. Wake and bake was the most popular answer, followed by after dinner. Titled, How Cannabis is Taking Over Christmas, the survey found about 75% of respondents would consider getting high with family during the holidays. This is really a sign of how far things have come over in just a few years, with cannabis being increasingly substituted for alcohol both personally and in more social settings, says the Oracle. Only 16.3% said they wouldn't want to, with the remaining respondents not being sure. Office parties would be a lot more cannabis-friendly if the majority had their way, with 55% saying they want weed-infused treats at the company holiday shindig. Drinking at the office party is well established as a part of Christmas tradition. But the survey reveals that the majority of people who've used cannabis want weed to be involved in the office party this year, says Oracle. The results show that 54.9% of respondents said they would really love it if their employer served cannabis-infused treats at their office parties. Another 14.3% said they didn't care either way, implying that it at least wouldn't bother 69.2% of the office. Only 20.5% said they didn't think it should be served at the party. When asked what their reasons were for intending to replace alcohol with cannabis, 52.9% said it was because cannabis is safer than alcohol. And 46.8% said it was because using cannabis makes them feel better than alcohol does, says CBD Oracle's website. After this, the lack of a hangover or dope-over was cited as an explanation by 38.9% of respondents. And the study concludes that weed is here to stay for the holidays. The results of the survey show that the landscape of the traditional holiday period is changing, says Oracle. While there will still be family members who prefer to spend the evenings working through a bottle of wine, a growing number will be taking a little break to light up, possibly even with the new strain or bong they got under the tree. The survey polled nearly 2,000 U.S. cannabis users on their cannabis consumption over the holidays. And you can see the further details of that survey if you check out the article, which I've linked back at CannabisPodcast.com. And thanks once again to my friend David Whitey. Another excellent story on one in three. Going to wake and bake this Christmas day. THC, CBD, terpene profiles, what's in me? Oh, please explain to me. Cultivar Corner, Cultivar Corner, oh yeah. Cultivar Corner, please explain this stuff to me. On Cultivar Corner today, I'm reveling in the fact that many members of my family get me. <laughs> they stopped trying to figure out what to get me for gifts and just get me weed. Kudos to my son, Ian, on my recently passed birthday. Not only did he get me some weed, which we're going to feature here on Cultivar Corner, 
But he also got me this really cool storage case called the, the Buzz Box, bzzbox.com, the bzzbox.com. Check it out. Very cool storage device. I'll talk about that in another segment on the podcast. But now we want to focus on the weed that he picked me up. Cool part of this is there's a little postcard that came along with the weed. Has a lot of the information that you're going to find on the website, which I, of course, have included in the link at CannabisPodcast.com. This is cool because it's another local product. This one's grown up in the Shushwap, which is a little north of the Okanagan, but another beautiful part of British Columbia. And this is from Cake and Caviar. And Cake and Caviar is from Habitat or Habitat Life. Nestled in the heart of the Shushwap in B.C., the Habitat facility sits on 600 acres of abundant farmland that has been in the Founders family for five generations. Like many parts of B.C., the Shushwap is known for its culture of quality cannabis, but it's also home to one of the world's most pristine salmon runs. So utilizing our innovative aquaponics technology, we have paired the two, not only because of their synergy, but because Habitat's brand is about recognizing and representing the beauty and spirit of B.C. And cannabis and salmon certainly are two representative spirits of B.C., Waffle Bites is what we're talking about today. This is a cross of cheesecake and sour OG. Descending from the legendary sour diesel, Waffle Bites carries a unique aroma of buttery waffles dripping in maple syrup goodness. <laughs> Seriously? <laughs> Sometimes I think we need to put reins on the marketing people. This is a, that sounds like what would be the copy for some maple syrup that, that was developed a few years ago. <laughs> Uh, all right, I, I'll quit doing my editorial on it. A unique aroma of buttery waffles dripping in maple syrupy goodness amidst tones of sharp and funky cream cheese. Through crossing cheesecake and sour OG, we've combined sweet and savory profiles that are sure to please even the most discerning palate. Well, with that kind of a marketing introduction, I think it's time we open up the jar and let's see what we're talking about. Oh... Now, am I getting a unique aroma of buttery waffles dripping in maple syrupy goodness? <laughs> I think you know the answer to that question, but I'll answer it nonetheless, no. <laughs> Good job on the marketing, makes it sound really appealing. But they didn't need to go that far. They could have just talked about the delightful citrus tones that come out of this jar. It's in a glass jar. Kudos to them on that. Mmm, nice buds. It was right on spot, and it was about probably three solid buds and, and just a couple of popcorn buds to make up the rest. So the dominant terpenes, glymanine, myrcene, farnesine, and caryophylline, and definitely citrusy. Lots of those citrus notes just come pouring out of the jar. Now, I'm in the process of reading a, another book, which was another birthday present, actually, and, and it deals a lot more with the endocannabinoid system. And in that, one of the pieces that I read just the other day, and, and we've talked about this before, and that's the level of terpenes and what makes your weed more sedative or more euphoric or, or more energizing. And one of the factors that seems to be consistent across that is the level of myrcene. And in this book that I will reference probably in another segment at some point, they talked about the fact that if it's over 0.5% myrcene, it's likely going to be a indica or a sedative property. And if it's less than 0.5% myrcene, it's likely going to be energizing or what we would call a sativa. Well, guess what? My cake and caviar waffle bites, THC is sitting at 24.2%. That's becoming a standard, I'm afraid. And total terpenes sitting at 3.86%. And as we talked about already, limonene, 1.22%. Myrcene at just a little over 0.5 at 0.53%. Farnesene is 0 0.40 and caryophylline at 0 0.40 as well. And then the other terpenes at 1.31%. So with that just over the edge leaning towards sedative, I'm wondering whether this will be a hybrid that leans perhaps to a little bit of an indica. Or, with all of that limonene, is it going to be regenerative and give me some energy? Well, you know, we don't have to wait much longer to find out. <laughs> I think I've delivered all the details to give you a sense of what we are trying. Cake and caviar, their waffle bites, 
As I've already learned a couple of episodes ago, I have the vaporizer all loaded up. It's charging right now. And while that's preparing, I have the joint already ready to go. So let's give a taste of Waffle Bites from Cake and Caviar, another BC product. This from the Shoe Schwab, just a little north of the Okanagan. Definitely some of those citrus notes in the smoke. Burning well. Nice white ash. Smooth smoke. No harshness in the throat at all. Mm. There was a little hint of some happy eyes creeping in there. So as I said, the THC range on this guy is 21 to 26%. I guess I didn't say that before, but I'm telling you now. The range is 21 to 26%, and I'm sitting at 24.2. And the terpenes, they suggest 3.9%, and I hit 3.86. I guess technically that's pretty close to 3.9, isn't it? Hmm. And yeah, I'm really happy how this is coming in real fast here. So the vaporizer is all up to speed, or shall I say temperature. Let's have a taste of Waffle Bites, and now let's see if we pick up. <laughs> and I'm going to keep harping on it, marketing team. The unique aroma of buttery waffles dripping in maple syrupy goodness. <laughs> okay, here we go. Well, the vaporizer is going to give me the best chance to get close to their description. One could imagine if you closed your eyes and really played with it a little bit, the, the, the taste of buttery waffles, I suppose. But I think they're stretching it with that maple syrupy goodness. So definitely some citrus. That farnesine, perhaps throwing in a bit of a fruity notes. And the caryophylline there, just because the caryophylline deals so well with our endocannabinoid system, it's always nice to have some in there and kind of lubricate up the ECS for us. Hmm. Now it's not, it's not knocking me out. And that's the thing with these ever-increasing THC values. You keep expecting that as the higher the THC goes, the bigger the bang is going to be. But of course, as we all know, part of the problem is we keep building up our tolerance to these different levels. <laughs> I am getting a really nice euphoric high. My happy eyes are there. A little bit of sedative nature in, you know, kind of that feel of my shoulders relaxing a little bit. Moving into a bit of a body stone, but not very much. I, th I think it is still leaning more to the energetic side rather than the sedative side. Clearly, it has impacted my synapses and that my brain connections are a little slower to generate. <laughs> Which I guess is what we're after, right? <laughs> when we when we want to get high, we, we do want to have some effect. And I would have to say that I have achieved some effect. <laughs> yeah. So once again, thanks to my son, Ian, for having the, the courage to break the stigmas and, and not be afraid to buy cannabis as a gift. And he has not been afraid to do that. He's done it a number of times now. Always enjoy it. Plus, I'll tell you about that cool storage case in a bit as well. I'd say if you haven't given the uh, shoe shop weed a try, it might be time to try another BC bud. Waffle bites, cake and caviar. Hmm. Not quite the waffly syrupy goodness they were promising, but pretty tasty nonetheless. Exploring the world of Canadian cannabis culture, one toke at a time. This is the Cannabis Podcast. We've talked many times on the Cannabis Podcast about the unexpected experience of edibles. <laughs> 
unexpected in what they're going to do for you, unexpected in how, how high you're going to get, how long it's going to take. Just a lot of unexpectedness with edibles. <laughs> and I had to chuckle this last week or two. My other son, you've heard me talk about my son Ian many times, but my other son, Sean, who I haven't mentioned many times because he really hasn't had much interest in the cannabis world until recently. <laughs> and that came as a result of that he was having trouble falling asleep. And he and I had chatted a number of times about, you know, cannabis. And I believe he's tried it once or, time, once or twice when he was in his teenage years and likely had some really sativa that kind of made his mind race and he didn't really enjoy the experience. So <laughs> this was in the last week and I got a text message from his wife <laughs> And uh, it's it's pretty humorous because if you've ever listened to any of the cannabis podcasts, you know we've talked about edibles, how it can be an unexpected experience. And because the liver is transforming that THC, it can be a, a more heavy experience as well. Fortunately, <laughs> he did listen to my advice. So this is what I, I got back. So the first edible that he tried was just a half of a five milligram. So there you go, 2.5 milligrams. And and not unexpected that that had no reaction for him. So he then took a full five milligram edible and an hour in, he said to his wife, you know, I don't feel anything. <laughs> this is the part that I really had to chuckle. Maybe I have some inherited tolerance or something. <laughs> and when I considered that, I just had it. I, I really laughed a lot <laughs> because although he is my son, there's very little likelihood that he inherited my THC tolerance, which has been developed over the last number of years. <laughs> but fortunately, his wife reminded him not to take more as per the guidance that I had given him before, and he didn't. And then when she was hitting the bed after having her shower for the night, there was Sean, who rolled over and looked at her with, as she describes, the most high eyes she's ever seen him have and smiles, she asked him how he's feeling, and he says, good, and then giggled for about 15 minutes. <laughs> After which, apparently, he had a really enjoyable sleep. So I was I was really stoked to get that message from, from two perspectives. Obviously, you know that I have a, a deep interest and passion about cannabis and how it can have a positive impact for many, many people in, in different circumstances. <laughs> but secondary, that's the first time that my other son has had a positive experience that, that I think he'll remember and perhaps may try some other relief available through cannabis. So there you go. Remember the story. If you do not get the edible dosage right, you're probably not going to have a really good time. And now we are kind of doing a hodgepodge, shall we say, a potpourri of cannabis information all related to storage and birthday presents and everything in between. <laughs> I mentioned earlier I was going to talk about storage. And there are two things I received for my birthday that have made me reevaluate and realize that storage of our cannabis is so important. And I don't think we spend enough time talking about it, nor enough time telling people how they should be storing it. They, they take their plastic bags home and, and keep reseeding them until the weed is used up. And ooh, it's one of the worst things that we can do to our weed, especially once it's been opened. So let me tell you about the two things that I received that are related to storage. The first one, and this was a present from my boss, Tarek. Thank you, dude. This is really, really cool. This is a uh, Seabalt. Seabalt is a food grade stainless steel sealable container and the one I got is big enough to store an ounce. And if you were listening last episode, you heard me talk about Broken Coast Amnesia Haze. Oh, and that is what's currently residing in my Seabalt. And it's almost like it continues curing when it's inside that absolutely wonderful job. Now, the Sea Vault has a Bovita pack, a space for the Bovita pack embedded on the, on the lid. So it makes it really easy to keep that up to date. Oh, just delightful aromas inside of that. So that's, that's one of the, if you want to go top of the line. Now, there are smaller sizes. You can get it down to a quarter. I think even down to an eighth, perhaps, which would make more sense. But in my case, I 
kind of happy that I got one that'll hold an ounce. <laughs> I will likely be refilling that one quite a bit. And now the other piece that I received for my birthday is a thing called the Buzz Box. And I say Buzz because it's BZZ Box. There are proceeds out of everything that they sell out of these beautiful bamboo wood boxes are going to help preserve bees, which is something we all need to be paying attention to. If you want to find out details on it, you can go to the website yourself, www.thebzzbox.com. Check that out. You'll find all kinds of details. And this is just beautiful bamboo wood. Really smooth, very nice. On the front, there's a three-digit combination lock. And since there's three digits, I'm not suggesting that 420 might have, have anything to do with my particular lock, but um, you can adjust it to any three digits that you would prefer. Now, inside this biz box is just a whole bunch of cool stuff. Glass jars is the first pe feature. Of course, as we've talked about before, storing your cannabis in the plastic that it comes with, not a good idea. And a lot of it is coming in glass jars, which is good. And if you keep that in a dark space, that is a good storage option. Same thing with this, because the, the box itself is going to provide the dark environment. So the glasses are cleared glass, but they have this area on the front. They paste it on a little piece that acts like a blackboard. And inside, there's a little dry erase marker that acts kind of like chalk on that little blackboard. So therefore, this slurricane, I can just write on it and I know what it is. And it wipes off easily, but not as soon as my finger touches it. So I found that really useful. The three jars inside of that. And then there's a fourth space for a jar if you have some extra. And in addition to that, there's another storage area. Well, look at that. I, I discovered a couple other birthday gifts that I'd forgotten about. And, and that involves another story, in fact. My wife has always been reluctant to buy me cannabis gifts. Her response has always been, well, well why? You, you, always, you buy your own cannabis. Why would I? Because she's always hounding me about she never knows what to buy me for gifts. And I keep saying, well, it's pretty easy. <laughs> But she didn't buy into that pretty easy until this time. I was really pleased to hear uh, when I opened these gifts that she had gone into the store and Emma and Kizzy had helped her. Kudos to you and, and shout out to Emma and Kizzy. I love what they do in the store. And they treated my wife really, really well and pointed her down the path of getting some pre-rolls. So I ended up with from Weed Me, some Crystal Ball Kush, THC, 30.07% and also some BC Straw Nana from Flower THC at 30.4 and lo and behold I still got them here I think I may pull that crystal ball cushion perhaps finish the podcast with that and the coolest part of the booze box is that the inner lid that is what you see when you open the box is again bamboo but it's a really cool rolling tray and, and you may not believe this, but I've never had a rolling tray. <laughs> and it is so cool to now have a rolling tray. And well designed, so there's a really nice space in the bamboo tray to actually put the weed and do your rolling. It comes with a couple of pokey things, of course, little bamboo sticks, and a place to put those, which is very cool. And the really neat part about the tray is they've put a hole in it. So when you have your jar in the bottom, you have the lid off of it, you can just scoop the weed back into the jar. Very cool design. I thought that was very clever. Really a nice addition. And probably the, other than the fact that my storage is really good and I can store a whole bunch of stuff in that box, lock it securely, which are all really good things. I think this tray is probably my favorite part of the buzz box. Check it out. The, the bzzbox.com. Beautiful bamboo box. Really a thoughtful gift. A great place for me to store my cannabis. And I think you may be interested yourself. And for that, I have to thank my son, Ian, and his wife, Christine. 
And since you just may be into some holiday partying going on, let's talk about a story from 420intel.com about some safe ways to share your cannabis during the flu season. Making it through the pandemic without contracting COVID only to end up with the flu is a nightmare for millions of Americans as flu season gets underway. The risk of contracting the flu is even higher for cannabis enthusiasts who are eager to get back to their old ways of passing weed to their friends. Now that that sparked something in my brain. We should do a poll. When was the last time, do you remember, that you actually passed a joint to somebody? Even rolled a joint and shared it with, with anybody? When was the last time we had a chance to do that? I think that's the thing I missed the most with this damn pandemic. Now, unfortunately, the idea of passing around bongs and blunts is still risky. However, there are ways to share your weed without sharing germs. And here are some suggestions. A great alternative to traditional methods of sharing weed with friends could be baking and sharing edibles together. There are numerous edible recipes that are easy to make and taste delicious. Making edibles could serve as a great way to catch up and enjoy each other's company before getting baked yourself. The fact that sharing edibles is likely the best way to enjoy cannabis together without potentially getting each other sick is an added bonus. I'm going to do a bit of a sidebar in that. I'm not so sure that is an accurate statement because if you don't get the dosing right when you're sharing edibles with your family who you have no idea what tolerance they have, could be a very interesting Christmas, I suppose. End of sidebar. It's no secret that germs can be easily exchanged by sharing pipes, bongs, and bubblers. That's why during flu season, it's likely a good idea to stick to using personal pieces even when smoking with friends. Fortunately, there are numerous pieces that are portable. This method is particularly fun when everyone has a different strain of their own to bring to the party that allows each person to try a new strain while using their own preferred device. Additionally, smoking marijuana from pipes allows the weed to last a bit longer than rolling it which means longer, more enjoyable sessions with your friends. So bring your own pipe, if you want to do it that way. Or similar to using personal paraphernalia, personal vaporizers could be an effective alternative to passing around the same bong or blunt. A lot of vaporizers on the market nowadays come with a two-in-one capability that allows both concentrates and dry herb. It allows you to get together with friends and enjoy the sensations both concentrates and dry herb offer without the risk of passing the flu or some other contagious illness, which shall go unnamed. Another benefit of using vaporizers as an alternative to passing a bong or a blunt is that vaping can provide a different high, which allows consumers to get a taste of the strain that they're consuming. You could share a double crutch. Sometimes nothing hits the spot like a puff of tightly rolled joint. Well, sharing a joint with friends without the risk of passing along a flu or cold is difficult, but that's where knowing how to roll a double crutch joint comes in handy. Rolling one is simple. All it takes is rolling one up the way you normally would, then cutting it in half. Just pass the other half to whoever it is you're smoking with, and suddenly you're sharing the same joint. But if you created that joint, does it not have your saliva on it? <laughs> End of story, sorry. Even though it'll likely take some getting used to, smoking a double crutch joint is the ideal way to share the satisfaction of a joint with the friend, without sharing the risk of getting sick. I'm not sure in the accuracy of that statement either, but I'll leave it to you to decide. As always, you'll find links to all of these stories at CannabisPodcast.com. And let me end with some future gazing, some things that are coming up. On a future cultivar corner, we are likely going to be featuring a gift that was available this Christmas in limited supply across Canada. It depends where you lived, how available it was. It was from Citizen Stash, and it is the 12 Joints of Christmas. Let me give you an idea of the cultivars that are involved. Interstellar, THC of 24.5. Cookie Puss, 22.8. Sunday Driver, 23.6. Uh, Fruity Pebbles OG, 24.4. The FPOG threw me off. I had to think about it. Sage and Sour, 23.7. Cake Crasher, 21.0. Stonewall, 22.3. Ice Cream Gelato, 23.0. Diesel Tonic, <clears throat> that's a new one. Haven't heard of that one for a bit. 18.9. 
Island Pink, 25.5, Death Bubba, 24.1, and Mac 1, 24.0. That's an interesting array of cultivars. The 12 Joints of Christmas. Now, if I can behave myself and have the fortitude to be recording at the right time, I'm going to try and give you a sense of what those 12 Joints of Christmas were in a kind of a cultivar corner that features the 12 joints, or as I jokingly refer to at work, in my case, the 12 hours of Christmas. <laughs> we'll see if that becomes a reality, but who knows? So there you go, Citizen Stash, the 12 joints of Christmas. Very interesting indeed. If you ever have comments about anything you hear on the Cannabis Podcast, please let me know, info at CannabisPodcast.com. And if you like what you hear and you feel so inclined, you can always buy me a doobie at buymeacoffee.com slash Cannabis Podcast. That's it for episode 87 of the Cannabis Podcast. From the Cannabis Infused Studio, high above the Okanagan Valley, this was the Cannabis Podcast. Cannabis Podcast.